Tonight on Super Size versus Super Skinny, one bony and one bulging bride to be hope to turn into wedding bells for their big day. Good grief, you're so light. But the honeymoon doesn't last long when gourmet food lover Rosemary turns her nose up at Super Skinny Jeanette's meals on the run. That looks disgusting. They're swapping diets so they can learn some home truths about food. Bloody hell, get it, get it, X. It's not going to kill you. But will they be able to stomach each other's breakfast, lunch and dinner? I wouldn't give it to my dog. Also tonight, diet detective Anna Richardson is on the case of extreme weight loss methods. It is a revolting. What has happened? You had too many takeaways. And bringing up the rear guard, Gillian McKeith goes high-tech to slim down the bums of Britain. You feel your bum getting sucked? Everything just feels tight. This week on a prenuptial super size versus super skinny, two brides to be are entering this feeding clinic for a five day diet swap. Starving the super size and stuffing the super skinny is Dr. Christian Jessen. Having an event like your own wedding can be a real motivation to change your eating habits. And I think such a shared goal will be a real incentive for these two to learn from each other and realize they're more similar than they think. First into the feeding clinic is 31-year-old working mum and super skinny Jeanette Nolan from Burnley. She's a junk food picker who struggled to put on weight all her adult life. You are six stone eight. So now it's time for Dr. Jessen to work out the size of Jeanette's problem. What are your thoughts on your weight? I've had people pick up my arm in a nightclub and tell me that's disgusting. I think they think that I want to look like this. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm really skinny. It's great. But I'm not. I don't like it. I don't want to look like this. Jeanette's diet is a dangerous combination of picky portions of cheap takeaway junk food and platefuls she virtually never finishes. Therefore, she desperately struggles to put on weight despite her high-fat and high-carb diet. Hiya. I've got a busy life, two children, run my own business, um, so you have to eat when you can get time to eat. Her poor quality diet is leaving Jeanette severely undernourished and she hardly ever finishes dinner, her one proper meal of the day. Desperate to put on weight, she's tried everything. I've tried everything, um, herbal tablets, I've spent a fortune on weight gain products. I can't give up this time, I've got to do it. Like every bride, Jeanette wants to look her best on her big day, but she doesn't want to walk up the aisle at her current weight. I'd like to get married, um, wear a nice dress, which I won't do at this, at this weight. I've been together 14 years, so it's about time. I'm always trying to tell her that she looks fine, she looks good. When she's getting dressed up to go out, she'll look at mirror, and even if she'll, she'll look gorgeous, but she'll say, no, I don't look right, you know, she's, she's quite down on herself, even when she's made up to look nice. Right now I'm at a place, we both are, where we think, right, let's get it sorted, let's get married, but I keep saying, well, wait till I've put some weight on, maybe next year. But help is on its way. Property investor, former gastro chef and lover of gourmet meals, Rosemary Palmer will provide Jeanette with a dietary shock tactic and give her a lesson in loving food. These two are at the opposite end of the eating scale, but they have one big thing in common. Like Jeanette, Rosemary's wedding plans are being wrecked by her weight. I kind of realised there's no way I'm going to be in the dress that I'd like to be in, so another casualty of my weight, really. There's quite a few things where her weight stopped us from doing things together. If we ever fly anywhere on long-haul flights, I know that I've kind of got a bit less seat than if I was with someone a little bit smaller, so I'm definitely looking forward to there being a little bit less of her. Unlike junk foodie Jeanette, supersized Rosemary prides herself on her taste for fine food. I do appreciate really good food. I'd never look at the price. If I want it, I would have it. And have it, she does. From steaming hunks of sea bass to the finest fillet steak, Rosemary simply can't get enough. Only trouble is, every meal she eats should be feeding too. I can't understand anybody that doesn't like food. 
I work out your body mass, which is this sort oh, of I don't ratio. Want to know. I don't want to know. Don't I'm going to tell, tell you. This. I'm no, going to really tell you. I really don't want to know that. Your body mass is 47.5. So about double or something that well, it should be. If I tell you that I'd be happy with a body mass of between 20 and 25. You would be classed medically if you want to use. Oh, them. I know, I know what you word you're going to say. You would be morbidly obese. I know, terrible. Morbidly obese. Why do you say you don't want to hear that? Well, because that really brings it home, doesn't it? With over a 14 stone weight difference, these two brides in waiting will now swap diets. Rosemary's got five days to romance Jeanette with food. And by living off Jeanette's poultry pickings, she'll learn some portion control and tackle her own weight problem. The question is, will this particular marriage be a happy one or end in divorce? I'd rather be six stone overweight than six stone underweight, definitely. I don't know how people can get to that size, morbidly obese, I don't know what they do. It's time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. Hello. How are you? I'm Rosemary. Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, wow. Come on, then. Get it over with. <laughs> what did you weigh in at? Six stone eight, apparently. Oh, my goodness. I need to lose about that much. Oh, God. And my doggy weighs that much. <laughs> How much do you weigh? Over 20 stone. Probably nearer 21. Right. So I kind of gain a stone a year and suddenly realise um, I won't be able to buy clothes soon if I don't lose some weight. Well, I, I couldn't believe how much you weigh. I can't imagine being able to eat that much food to put on that kind of weight. <laughs> she wants to lose me, which is amazing. <laughs> She'll soon be facing Rosemary's supersized diet firsthand. But now Dr. Jessen wants to show them just what one week's worth of their current eating looks like. So, Jeanette, let's have a look at the sorts of things that you would get through during the course of a typical week for breakfast. Baked beans? Yeah. Bacon? Bacon sandwich, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Cheese on toast? Let's move on. Let's see what sort of things you get through for lunch. Okay. So fish fingers, chips. chips, a Cornish pasty. Cornish pasty. Burgers, burger. masses of starchy food and breads and cakes and burgers. It's all quite fatty. Not a lot of vegetables there, really, either. Let's move on. Right, what would you get through for dinner now? Let's have a look. Chicken chow mein. OK. Some pasta. This is getting better. Your evening meals do seem to be a little bit more healthy. Well, I have to because the children are there. A woman's recommended daily intake is 2,000 calories. By just picking at these fatty foods and never finishing a proper meal, Jeanette's only getting 1,700 poor quality calories a day. So she's under eating by 2,100 calories every week. That adds up to more than one entire day's worth of food. To make matters worse, Jeanette's dreadful diet is depriving her body of vital nutrients, something Rosemary's diet is rich in. A lot of fruit which is great. Scrambled egg. Can you see how this compares with your breakfast already? This is very rich. It's good food. Scrambled eggs, yeah. lots of fruit, all that cereal. Loads and loads of juice. What sort of things would you have for lunch, Rosemary? Talk um, to me. A lot of chicken Caesar salad. Oh, yeah, I can see the chicken. Minestrone soup. Loads and loads of Lots of vegetables, vegetables. Baked potatoes. So, yes, she cooks wonderful food. Yes, it's not horrible processed food. It's all good stuff. There's too much of it. It's three full meals a day with all the trimmings. Rosemary is consuming a whopping 4,000 calories a day. That's a staggering 28,000 calories a week, or an overeat of seven days' worth of food. Coming up... Oh, my God, what's wrong with that? Rosemary finds Jeanette's junk food diet is hard to swallow. That looks disgusting. Anna Richardson gets to grips with the latest extreme diets... I'm a maple syrup. Virgin. And Gillian McKeith shows us how we can enjoy those party snacks without piling on the pounds. Our golf snacks. Yeah. Our golf is snacked. So far in my quest to shift the stones, I've tried all sorts of bizarre diets. From lunchtime lipo to even diet pills. I've lost 10 pounds, which is fab, but to be honest, there's still a lot more to go. So I want something that works fast. I've been trawling the net for a quick fix weight loss solution and I think I might have stumbled across something. Apparently, Beyonce lost loads of weight in a matter of days for a film role. There's a lot coming up about how Beyonce lost two stone on the maple syrup diet. It seems to be water. 
maple syrup and cayenne pepper? And that's all she drank for two weeks. Lemon, maple syrup, cayenne pepper. You're meant to drink this concoction three times a day for up to two weeks. Oh, and don't eat a thing. The syrup is crucial for energy and the pepper is supposed to speed up your metabolism by 15%. I'm a maple syrup virgin. I'll just tell you what. There's something about hot, sweet water and the kick of the cayenne pepper that actually I don't like. I actually feel a bit sick. It is a revolting. Now, I'll put up with an awful lot to drop a couple of dress sizes, but I'm dreading feeling physically sick after every mealtime. So, I'm still on the lookout for any other extreme quick pick solutions. And lo and behold, I might have found it. I'm on my way to meet a guy who claims to have lost seven stones in six months, or three and a half pounds a week, on a baked bean diet. At your height of beandom, what were you doing? Baked beans for breakfast. With H hot or cold? Cold, normally. Ew, out yeah. of a tin? Yeah. On a Sunday, I'd heat them up as a treat. <laughs> but mainly cold during the week. <laughs> So how many tins of beans were you eating a day? Probably at the most. I think the most I've ever had in a day would be about six tins of beans. Let's be frank. Come on. There must have been some pretty hideous side effects. Uh, there wasn't. Actually, all the way through the diet, there wasn't any... I didn't get any wind. Shut up, Joe! I don't believe a word <laughs> I of didn't, it! honestly. But it wasn't until I reached my target weight that it started to catch up with me, I think. Really? Yeah. So, I, I mean, through quite a few bad weeks of... <laughs> I'm happy to say that it seems like the wind has now stopped. You don't smell, no. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you can't smell. Ex like extra deodorant. <laughs> right. Are you still eating beans? Yes. Still, still quite a major part of my diet. I still have at least three tins of beans a day. Crack it open. Do you have to try and get the aroma? Get the aroma in. OK. And then tuck in. They need heating up. Do you not taste that kind of aluminium? That's the flavour, I think. Well, cold baked beans might mean instant weight loss for James, but to be honest, for me, they taste even worse than the maple syrup, so that's what I'm sticking with. Of course, the thing about this kind of extreme dieting is that, well, eating out is never quite as much fun, is it? Are you with us, Wilbur? Yes, I am. Could I have, please, a glass of water mm -hmm. and a tablespoon? Do you like any food? There's nothing, absolutely nothing on here that I can have. Thank you very much. Absolutely starving. Thank you. You're welcome. Cheers. Mm, I'll tell you what, a million times better cold. Right, that's lunch done. I'm so full. And that's the thing. I'm only taking in a shocking 150 calories a day on what is just basically sugared water. That can't be healthy. In destiny, Charlie's angel. Five days into the diet. Cheers. And unfortunately, the taste isn't getting any better. And even though I've lost another two pounds, I'm that hungry, I could chew my right arm off. How on earth Beyonce managed to do two weeks of just drinking this stuff is completely beyond me. In fact, I'm prepared to say that I don't believe it. She must have eaten something, even if it was just veg. She must have had something in those two weeks. Although, having said that, if I was a multi-millionaireess and I was told I needed to shift two stone in two weeks by drinking this, I might just manage it. There's only one place for this stuff. Goodbye. Vile, hideous brew. <sighs> but my battle with the bulge isn't over yet. Next week, I'm going stateside to see if I can discover the next big thing in weight loss. And later in the show, I'll be hearing firsthand the shocking truth behind Nikki Graham's battle with anorexia. I've got acute osteoporosis in my spine.
It's breakfast in the feeding clinic, and former chef Rosemary is serving up a buttery croissant that she's stuffing with prime back bacon and generous slices of mature cheddar cheese. That's for breakfast. Thank you. Unfortunately for Rosemary, Jeanette's poultry offering isn't quite as impressive. No, you are joking. Late for work, got to work, customers coming in, have a packet of crisp, quick drink, start my customer, and as soon as I get a gap, I'd eat. But Rosemary doesn't buy Jeanette's excuse or her breakfast. I would not entertain having a bag of crisps as my breakfast. If Rosemary was my best friend sat there, then I'd be saying, oh, bloody hell, get it, get it ate. It's not going to kill you. You know, come on, this isn't fair, I'm doing it, you do it, but... I'd love to just give it a go. So, after a shaky start, it's lunchtime. Rosemary, who hasn't eaten anything yet, dishes up a homemade helping of one of her favourites. You've got mushroom risotto. So Jeanette's about to enjoy a wild mushroom, cream and fresh parmesan risotto. Rosemary, however, has to make do with what Jeanette usually picks at of a lunchtime. A junk food jamboree of a takeaway deep-fried sausage and chips. I love mushrooms, though. I love chips. <laughs> mm. <coughs> oh, my God, what's wrong with that? Ugh. We really have got a abandoned lunch. <coughs> but Jeanette's cheap sausage is just too much to swallow. <coughs> that is disgusting. Yeah. That is really horrible. I'm really sorry, Jeanette. That is just the nastiest, cheapest sausage and the horriblest, oldest, unchanged oil that have fried those in in the world. It's war. Oh, can't eat that either. Jeanette, in turn, rejects Rosemary's gourmet lunch. The worst sausage I've eaten, and I wouldn't give it to my dog. It's a really bad smell, is that? It looks like something a dog would throw up. I can't believe she's that way and she eats like that. I just, I, I cannot believe it. With Rosemary having nearly choked on a takeaway sausage and Jeanette virtually retching on the risotto, things have got off to a disastrous start. Oh, oh, it smells when you move it. The battle's about to resume over dinner as homemade food lover Rosemary faces yet more takeaway torment. It's here. Oh, is it? Can't wait. It's one of Jeanette's favourite combinations, chicken chow mein with the curry sauce. But foodie Rosemary has plans to supersize Jeanette with her gigantic portions. I would have steak, but not that large. That's a, a modest size, no, really. No, I wouldn't be that, no, That's no. actually only about 300 grams. I think Rosemary is in a little bit of denial. I don't think she wants to know or realises how big she is and how big her portions are. And straddling the steak are a number of generous accompaniments. Sautéed mushrooms, a huge portion of ratatouille, a buttered jacket potato and a supersized sprinkling of full-fat cheddar. But neither of them are impressed with what's on offer. That isn't so good. Did no, you never is that. <laughs> it's like... That's really... I don't know. It's like chewing a finger. It would be so superior home-cooked and you really don't know what, who's cooked this or what they've put in it, do you? You haven't got a clue. Jeanette's also struggling and whilst the steak Rosemary's given her may be far too big, this helping of red meat will give Jeanette a much-needed iron boost. Iron is vital for a healthy immune system and a deficiency can lead to low energy levels. Other iron-rich foods include dried apricots, sesame seeds and sardines in tomato sauce. The texture's awful. It's horrible on a mushroom. With Jeanette turning her nose up at all the healthy, nutritious food that's been laid in front of her, it's time for action. Dr Jessen is determined to get her to acquire a taste for good grub. He's laid on a private horror show to highlight the shocking physical damage her dreadful diet is doing. What I want to do this for, really, is not, not just to be nasty to you, but to actually make some really serious points. You're a woman, you have periods, you lose iron every month, OK? So you need to be absorbing iron in your diet. A chronic lack of iron will result in anemia. If you're underweight and your body fat drops below 13%, you're at risk of your periods stopping. Have a look at these knees. Have a look at the skin around your knees. It's quite dry and wrinkled, so you're not getting enough vitamin C in your diet. 
okay? And vitamin C is really important for your skin and your connective tissue and making nice elastic collagen in your skin, which is why your skin's in not such great condition there. A lack of vitamin C will also weaken your immune system, leaving you susceptible to colds and flu. And if your body is feeling run down, you'll look run down too. And I think that's reflected in your face as well. All I want to point out is things like dark circles on your eyes and very, very pale, waxy-looking skin. It doesn't look healthy skin, does it? You're also missing out on important things like B vitamins. And calcium and B vitamins work together. They boost you, they give you energy, they increase your metabolism. All of these things work to just make you feel happier and better and stronger. A lack of energy can also leave you prone to mood swings, anxiety and, in severe cases, depression. It's all about making sure you give yourself time, that you're actually doing this and you're looking after yourself and you're giving yourself some decent food for once. Yeah? Yeah. So it's over to Rosemary as she attempts to broaden Jeanette's culinary horizons with a trip out to a gastro pub. But the menu is a scary new world to junk foodie Jeanette. There's nothing on this menu that I would eat. Not a single thing. There's nothing on there that I like. I would have, like, a burger from McDonald's. Did I order smoked haddock and a mixed salad? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that looks really lovely. Oh, stop. <laughs> Look away, don't watch me. But Jeanette's fears are unfounded. She's actually enjoying what Rosemary's chosen. No, I'm serious. I would never have ordered it, ever. I really can't believe you're eating all that. At that speed as well. But it was delicious. It was really nice. I'm really missing fish and salad. I would have really, really enjoyed that lunch. I have. But instead of a sit-down slap-up, Rosemary gets a burger on the run. Is that it? That's your burger. Enjoy. Come on, eat it. <laughs> Oh dear, yet another meal in the bin. Is Rosemary going to eat anything this week? All set, let's go. You need calories to provide your body with energy to function. But eat too many or too few and over time you'll end up with a weighty problem. So with my willing waiters, I'm going to get you calorie smart. This week, it's party food. Let's see if the pitchers at this bowling alley get a full strike when it comes to counting their calories. Before these guys hit the bar, let's take a look at my three dishes. Lift that lid, please. Deli platter. A bit of hummus, mozzarella, smoked salmon, and even a bit of tomato salsa, marinated olives. Put that lid back on, please. Lift your lid. I've got the porky pie platter. That's two snack-sized pork pies with garlic and onion dip, celery and tomatoes. And your classic party platter with the scotch egg, salmon relais, bit of nuts, sausage roll, cocktails, oh, and the pineapple and cheese. Let's see what this lot decides, shall we? What's it? Lift the lids, guys. I would go for the middle one. I think with the scotch egg, I would say that's probably the most calorific. I think that one. The porky pie party. Yeah. I'd say that one there is the highest in calories. How many calories so. does it have? Um, I would say there's 1,200 calories. 1,200? Yeah. How many calories does the party platter have? Oh, so I've never counted calories. I've never really needed to, fortunately. Oh, I don't know, probably something around... the. 2,000 mark, maybe? Right then, the party's nearly over, so let's see how the 10-pin wizards fared. Well, 48 out of 100 thought that the party platter is the highest in calories. Were they right or were they wrong? They were way off target. With 849 calories, the porky pie platter is the most calorific. For the same amount, you could eat seven bite-sized Cornish pasties, 18 tiger prawns wrapped in phyllo pastry, or 38 vegetable sushi rolls. 
second highest was the mixed party platter with those honey roast nuts, seeing the calories soar to 612. If you like a nutty nibble, try these lower calorie alternatives. My deli platter contains the least amount of calories, just 453. Gob smacked. You're gob smacked? Yeah. Our gob is smacked. Coming up. It's not quite as much as what that is. Jeanette reigns in Rosemary's supersized portions. And Gillian McKeith's Brummy Girls get rather overexcited with their high tech ass busting gizmos. Oh, oh firm already. <laughs> Our trousers are falling off. I'm not kidding. Uh, what is that? It's a big bum. Over the last few weeks, I've been on a campaign to reduce the size of the nation's rears. It's a 54-inch bottle. Well, I think it could do with being just a bit less. This is a bit like playing with dough. What do you think about your bottom, then? Large. <laughs> I mean, that's because you've been sitting on it too much. <laughs> and my ladies on a mission have been working hard to get their tushes into shape. They've been bucking on Broncos, have received their marching orders, got some physical training, some electric shock treatment, and the most successful regime so far got their butts surfed into shape. Get off your ass! <laughs> oh my god! My campaign has now reached Birmingham. What has happened? We are too many takeaways on that curry mile! And I'm not impressed with what I'm seeing. I'm gonna deal with you ladies from Birmingham in a minute. Because from the looks of things up here, instead of black country, it looks like bat country. The average brum bum comes in at around 47.1 inches, a flabby five and a half inches above the national average. Four feet wide bum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shocking cheek to cheek total of 424 inches. That's almost four dump trucks end to end. So, to pulverise their posteriors, I've an exercise gym, but not as we know it. Right, ladies, these are my two boys. They're going to do all the bottom sucking. I've never seen anything like it before, so... Yeah. Looks interesting. Yeah. Can we have a look? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Inside these futuristic-looking exercisers is a high-tech cycling machine. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is combined with a vacuum system that sucks on your lower body while you cycle. The makers claim that the sucking creates a vacuum as you work out. This boosts circulation to areas prone to store fat like flabby buttocks, therefore speeding up the fat burn. Right, oh, Sue, start pedaling for me. <laughs> oh, this is horrible. Everything from the waist down just being sucked in. It's a very strange sensation. Yeah, I'm not just floating. Do you feel your bum getting sucked? It's really strange. You think everything just feels tight. If we went up to here, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, firm already. <laughs> Trousers are falling off. I'm not kidding. Can I breathe out? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like you're being vacuum cat? I do, yes. It's all getting sucked in. <sighs> Looks like the girls are enjoying themselves. Find out if these suckers get those brum bums down to size later in the show. <laughs> Super skinny Jeanette Nolan picks at her food, which means she's underweight and undernourished. I think the size zero and Victoria Beckham, it doesn't help at all. I think people think that all women want to be supermodel thin and we don't. It makes me laugh when people say, um, oh, I can never get clothes to fit me. They're all for like size four and size. So I can't get clothes to fit me. They look like they do on a court hanger. In a last ditch attempt to put on a few pounds and fill out her figure, she's swapped diets with 21 stone Rosemary Palmer. But for fine food lover Rosemary, surviving on Jeanette's junk food diet is proving a struggle. <coughs> that looks disgusting. It's breakfast time in the feeding clinic, and Jeanette doesn't like the look of her supersized portion of cereal. I don't eat cereal, but we'll give it a go. That's your lovely cheddar cheese on toast. 
But Rosemary's still refusing to touch what Jeanette puts in front of her. I know exactly what white bread and melted slabs of cheddar look like and taste like. There's not really that much nutritional value in white processed bread anyway, so it's a little bit pointless eating it. Rather than simply reducing her portions, Rosemary seems to have gone on a food strike. It's time for Dr Jasson to step in. Why haven't you been eating it? Um, it's not the sort of food I would normally eat. If I'm going to eat something, I've got to enjoy it, and I wouldn't enjoy any of the types of food that Jeanette put in front of me. All the pastry things, all the cheap, nasty meat, yeah. um, all the ready-made stuff, it, it's just completely foreign to me. So, um, and I've really missed fruit and vegetables. The big worry I have is you haven't been eating very much this week. No. And do you think not eating is going to be doing you any good? No, absolutely. I don't think not eating does you any good either. This crash diet is a nightmare for your body mm. because your body thinks, heck, we're starving, there's no food coming in, so it shuts itself down. Your metabolism slows right, right down. Then when you do start eating any food that you eat, it conserves desperately because mm. it thinks there's a famine on. And how does it conserve it? As fat go straight to fat and when you start eating again after a crash diet you tend to just balloon because your metabolism is so useless at burning off you put on all the weight you fail your crash diet mm. don't make that mistake with rosemary's wedding just a few months away she's in danger of not reaching her target weight jeanette's also planning on getting married and they're both terrified about how they'll look on the big day so they've been given a selection of wedding dresses to try on in the hope that what they see in the mirror will motivate them to change both their diets and their body shape. Gorgeous. I've refused to look at wedding dresses because I've not wanted to because I don't want to try that them is, on yet. That is gorgeous. Look at that. That is stunning, isn't it? The thing is... Look at that. You get me and some me again in here. Need. I need some boobs. <laughs> and some arms. And arms and, and shoulders I need. Right, let's see if I can get the net right. Right, what size is it? This is a 20. Is it going up? Seriously? No, it, it's... Try, 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 try. Breathing it up, breathing it in. I did, and then you laughed. Oh, Crikey. Nice. It's huge, though. I wouldn't want to be a big bride like this. I've very much got a mental picture of how I want to look on the day. So, this has just made me more determined. Just got to go down a size at a time in not. ten months. Book the date, then you will. No, because it'll be cancelled if it I don't won't. If I look like this. It won't. Jeanette, I know you can do it. Really, set the date. Go on. I'm going to see if I can pick you up. <laughs> can I Good grief, you're so light. I can't believe how light you are. Wow. Walking down the aisle is an achievement if I get there because it means that I've put the weight on, I've, I look half decent and I've got there if I get there. <laughs> mm. I just can't imagine putting on weight because I've never done it. I've never been able to do it, so to have bigger arms would be just so strange to get there. After an emotional afternoon, it's dinner time. Question is, have Dr. Jasson's words of wisdom and trying on those wedding dresses had any effect? There you go, girl. Right, I'll get you off tonight. I must have been starving. <laughs> Jeanette's getting the benefit of large amounts of nutritious calories for the first time. It is a very nice smell. I think, is it that? That smells there. Mm, and some herbs on the, when I cook the fish underneath it. Mm. Rosemary's also had a breakthrough. She's ended her fast and is enjoying a burger that's not built for two. I reckon I'm going to eat all mine. What's the first meal of yours I've eaten at all? I think she really enjoyed that dinner tonight. It's the only one I've eaten of uh, Jeanette since I've been here. Nevertheless, when you're hungry, it was actually quite enjoyable. It's made a change for it, isn't it? So at last, Rosemary's given up on her hunger strike. Now she can get used to eating Jeanette's smaller portions, which will help her lose weight for her wedding. As a former young slimmer of the year, it's not the first time she's set herself an ambitious weight loss target. 
I decided I'd got to lose the six stone because I ended up at 16 stone four There's, and I'm behind, yeah, oh at 16 stone four and I got down to 10 stone four. After battling with the bulge for most of her life, Rosemary's confident she can lose the weight once more. I don't feel fat, you know. If I did, I would have slimmed before now. I feel like this thin person still that I was then. I've never forgotten what it feels like. These brummy bums have had 12 bottom-burning exercise sessions in four weeks. But did these high-tech vacuum machines succeed in toning up these tushes? Bountiful butts of Birmingham, you had the vacuum. Did it suck up that extra flab, or are you still the size of the black country? Well, they certainly look a bit firmer. But did my girls get sucked into shape? I think my bum now is a lot smaller, firmer, lifted, whereas before it was sort of flabby, saggy and bigger. You've done very well. So you've lost two and a half inches off your bum. I went from 41 inches down to 38 and a half, which means I can fit in jeans that I haven't been able to do for about two years. However, at £450 for 12 sessions, there are cheaper ways of buffing up your bum. I don't know if I pay that much money to do it. I'm sure there's other ways that you could, but if you're determined and you want to do it, it's a good way. I've got the results. And you lost in total 13 and a half inches. That is on average a loss of one and a half inches per bum. Well, that's a fantastic result, but still not as impressive as my Cardiff girls and their surfboard routine, who remain at the top of my ass-busting league. It's the final day of the diet swap. That's a really nice, juicy chicken. Having finally started to eat Jeanette's meals, Rosemary's still trying to get the upper hand and she decides she's in charge of her portion control. It smells nice, doesn't it? It does smell nice, yeah, it does. Good effort. What do you think? We've improved slightly. It's not quite as much as what I'd eat. Wouldn't you eat all that? No. Have I got to have half of that? <sighs> the last swap, Rosemary. Okay. Nice and crunchy. After a week of sitting down to eat three square meals a day, Jeanette's feeling optimistic about the future. There's been big parts of my life that you can't enjoy your food, you don't look forward to your food, and it's just been something I had to do to survive. And I think I need to get the enjoyment back now. It's been strange but nice to not have to rush anywhere. Yeah, just to sit down and, and eat your meals and then relax, I think. It's been nice. I don't want to go home. <laughs> And it seems Christian's advice has finally hit home for Rosemary. I don't want to be as big as I am. I definitely don't want to be in a size 20 plus, 22, 24 wedding dress. I want to be just back to normal, how I was. I'm looking forward to going back to my diet pared down. Just cut those portions and watch the pounds drop off. All the best. Cheers. The diet swap is over, but Dr. Jessen is hoping the lessons they've learned will help them on the real battle ahead as they follow a healthy, balanced eating plan for the next 12 weeks. Right, so I've got the diet plans here for you. Jeanette, that's yours, and Rosemary, that's yours. Now, Jeanette, okay. I want you to think about this, because this is the beginning, OK? It's not the end of this week. It's the start of your proper, official, new focus on eating. So you're we're going to cut out all that rubbish that you've been eating. You've discovered all sorts of really delicious, lovely new foods that you'd never have looked at before, would you? Lots of lovely fruit and vegetables, some of the carbohydrate things that are really going to help make you feel happier, less tired, give you all those vital vitamins Aren't and we? minerals. You remember all that? <laughs> yep. yep. So we're going to go for it. Yep. And Rosemary, with you, it's all about portion size, isn't it? We were going really over the top before, huge, big portions. And the other thing mm. for both of you is take it easy. Just, just don't try everything Five all at couple. once. Well, 12 weeks' time, you'll be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Come on.
Coming up, the results of Jeanette and Rosemary's weigh-in. And now, you've managed to lose. And Big Brother's Nikki Graham tells Anna Richardson about her darkest days suffering from anorexia. And the nurses would have to hold me down. I remember being held down by, like, six members of staff just to try and feed me. Over the last six weeks, I've been on a journey through the madness of fad dieting to see what works, what doesn't, and what's just plain bad for you. But whilst researching the latest weight loss trends, I've come across dozens of stories of people who've suffered some really hideous consequences of diets that have spun out of control. These stories, while shocking, need to be told as a warning to those of you out there whose diets are at risk of sliding into something more dangerous. One story that really astounded me was the increasing rate of eating disorders amongst children in this country. I'm on my way to meet Nikki Graham, who developed an eating disorder at a terrifyingly young age. In the last 13 months, 206 British children under 13 have been diagnosed with an eating disorder. 37% of these were suffering from anorexia, with the youngest being eight years old. So, Nikki, I know you've had big problems in your life mm. with food and, and with your body. When did you first become conscious <clears throat> of it all? It started around the age of seven. That young, yeah, seven? I was a baby. I wanted to be the skinniest girl in my class. All I was eating in a day was a few cubes of fruit salad, three cups of fluid and either a low-fat yoghurt or a um, dry piece of toast. OK, so from, from the age of eight, you were diagnosed as being anorexic. By nine, you were being force-fed, and by 12, you were in Great Ormond Street Hospital. I got admitted to hospital as 18 kilograms, and I was skeletal, but I thought I was fat, and I thought I've still got to lose weight. People were forcing me to eat this food and make me put the weight on. It made me hate food. It made me not want anything in my body. I was pulling the tube out, snapping them in half four or five times a day, and the nurses would have to hold me down. I remember being held down by, like, six members of staff just to try and feed me. They had no choice but to sedate me and have one stitched into my stomach. I would do whatever I could to lose weight. I'd hide food in my knickers, I'd hide it in my socks, in my pockets. I'd fill my mouth up with food before I left the table and spit it out. I'd vomit up the whole meal within seconds. All the, all the tricks I used to do to make them think I'd put on weight. I remember stitching fishing weights into my hair scrunchie. So you're a recovering anorexic now. What long-term health effects has, has that had on your body? I've never had a period in my life. You've never had a period never. in your life? Ultimately, it means I can't have kids because my ovaries never develop to full size. Am I right in thinking that you also have osteoporosis? I've got um, acute osteoporosis in my spine and my hip, which is quite worrying because it's much more likely that I could break my spine now um, and obviously be paralysed. <laughs> Nikki's situation is absolutely tragic, and it's shocking to think there are so many children suffering from eating disorders in this country. Next week, as I continue my investigation into the darker side of dieting, I discover a terrifying new trend, diabulimia, in which diabetics deliberately restrict their insulin in order to lose weight, with appalling consequences. You've gone blind in one eye? Yeah, I went blind from it. Nine weeks ago, Jeanette was a super skinny junk food picker, desperate to put on weight and set a date for her wedding. She's eight weeks into her 12-week healthy eating plan, and it's time to find out if proper healthy eating has made a difference. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. How's it going? Well, thank you. Should we go get your weight? Yep. Dress and gown off for me. Final time, and then come on this way. So. Jeanette certainly looks glowing. But has she managed to get herself up to a more healthy weight? Good. You can jump up. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Jeanette's reunited with her diet swap partner, Rosemary, to share the results. Right. It's results time, OK? Do you remember what you weighed when I first saw you? Yeah, massive six stone eight. A huge six mm. stone eight. All right. <laughs> yeah. And now, I think you have filled out Beautifully, you're now six stone ten. You've put on two pounds. <laughs> that's that's why amazing. Your are feeling a little bit tight. Jeanette's weight gain is a positive step in the right direction. 
But what she also really wanted was to fill out into a more womanly figure. You've got a little bit more padding. You're looking healthier. You're looking healthy. You're looking fantastic. Gastro gourmand Rosemary is still enjoying her food, but has downsized her once supersized portions. So has her new diet sized her down too. Do you remember what you weighed when we met? Oh, 21 stone. 21 stone. <laughs> and now you've managed to lose. Two stone, nine pounds. Yes! Oh, I hope it was two and a half. Two and a half. More than two and a half. <laughs> Fantastic. But, do you know what's even better? Inches. So, not only has Rosemary lost over two and a half stone, she's also lost an inch around each arm and five inches off her waist. I knew from my trousers. <laughs> oh, you've really done it. You've really done it. I know. And you're going to keep it up? Absolutely. And yeah. It's been now two dress sizes I've lost, definitely. That's... Nothing fits me. I haven't got any clothes. <laughs> I'm absolutely on track for the wedding date. This works. Proper eating, proper food. You feel well. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I don't feel like I've been on a diet. I've just gone healthier, really. I feel guilty having a, you know, a takeaway now. <laughs> Yeah, we set a date for the wedding. Now I can enjoy shopping for a wedding dress, knowing that I am getting bigger and choose one that I want now. Yeah, I'll think I'll look all right. <laughs> what Jeanette hasn't gained in weight, she's definitely gained in confidence, and it's great to see her looking so happy and really looking forward to the future. If you are affected by any of the issues raised in this program and would like more information, then log on to www.channel4.co.uk forward slash health. Next time on Super Size versus Super Skinny. You are kidding me. It's going to be one hell of a bumpy ride in the feeding clinic. A size zero Louise Sapsford. Oh my gosh. Faces up to the damage her diet's doing. In my spine. Well, 28 stoner Desroy Gordon gets delivered a shocking ultimatum. If you carry on like this, you are going to end up in a box in the ground. And four. Anna Richardson goes looking for the latest fat busting techniques in New York, but finds herself in need of professional help. I need to eat one. Don't turn the control of your life over to a muffin. Ooh. And Gillian McKee sees if a bunch of jive dancers know their calories as well as their moves. So for that information about food matters and body image, go to channel4.com slash health. Would you give up your car for a day just because someone asked you to? Chris Murrin attempts to get a whole town doing just that. Next, here on 4.